Let's talk about cash out refinances. I've been getting this uh, question a little bit, actually. It's, uh, it's one of interest to me as well. So let's, uh, let's tell what a cash out refinance is. We're going to start with the premise that uh, we'll just say you took a $500,000 mortgage. You had a $500,000 fair market value on your home. And you took a $400,000 mortgage, all right? So that's 80% uh debt to value all right so uh, so we have a or loan to value of 80 percent excuse me loan to value 20 percent equity 80 percent loan to value all right so basically for every hundred thousand dollars it costs you basically 500 bucks a month of a payment so in this case you got four hundred thousand dollars a month two thousand a month is what your monthly payment is all right now, for simplicity, we're just going to run these numbers. I'm pulling from my head. But, you know, for a 30-year mortgage, again, it's basically 500 a month for each 100000 you borrow, you know, give or take property taxes. If you have live in a high property tax, probably a little bit more. Low property tax, maybe a little bit less. But it's, it's a good round number here. All right, so basically we're going to say in 30 years, you took this out, we'll just say in 2007. And the reason I'm using 2007 is because the market uh, crashed, and we'll come back for this in just a second. So this will be matured in 2007 where you have no mortgage at all. All right, so you got in 2007 with a house that's worth $500,000. Let me see if I can yeah, a little bit better. All right, uh, we, we had 80% loan to value, LTV, all right. 2,000 months of monthly payment, and come 2037, after 30 years, we got no mortgage. Uh, the, the market then took a big dump, and it came back up. So now it is 15 years later, and the house is again is worth 500,000 bucks. All right, because it went joops and joops. So we bought it at the high, it fell you know, 40%, now it's come back up to uh, 500,000. All right, but so we have made no money in this house. The only reason I'm doing that is for simplicity. But 15 years in 2020, uh, 2020, we'll just say we have two. We still owe 200k on it, just for simplicity. All right. So when all this is said and done in 2037, we're just saying 15 years now, we'll have no mortgage at all, and we'll owe, uh, we'll own whatever the fair market value is of that home, which we'll talk about here in just a second. But you're like, man, Josh, you know, we'll just say me. I just turned 50, all right? In 2037, I'll be 67 years old, uh, which means I'll start taking Social Security or something like that. So, uh, in, you know, or 65 years old, just for simplicity. So I'm going to say 15 more years. So in 60, when I'm 65, um, I think I can actually do better if I borrow against my home and invest it than I can if I just leave it there and pay off the mortgage. I hope that makes sense. So by the time I'm 65 years old, uh, I, I think I can actually have a higher net worth. So in this case, we're taking, we're gonna pay off this mortgage because we still owe 200,000 on it. And we're gonna borrow another 200,000. So we're gonna have a mortgage balance now of five or 400K, right? But we're still gonna have the same 2,000 a month monthly payment. Because what's happening here is you're, that hasn't changed. It's just this went from uh, 2037 to be paid off, but now it's not, I mean, it's still 2,000 months. So nothing has changed from our outgoing cash flow. All right, so we have 400,000 now is what we're going to do. The 200, 2037 kicks around. We're still going to owe uh, uh, 200K. We're just saving. And then right now, 2020 is 400K, if that makes sense. So basically, come 2030. Seven again, just 15 years. We'll just say, let's just say 2036, just to make it simple. 15 years, so 2036, we'll owe 200,000, all right. And uh, but right now we owe 400. So, when all said and done, we owe $400,000 on a $500,000 home, all right. But now, all right, on this case, but we're gonna have 200,000 outstanding here, we owe $200,000 on a $500,000 home. All right, so everything's the same because we still have, in this scenario, we still we have two hundred thousand dollars that's going to work for us in the markets. Two hundred thousand to invest. So, it all said and done, we have uh, four hundred thousand dollars of a mortgage, but we have a hundred thousand of equity plus three uh, two hundred thousand dollars to invest. We have a uh, three hundred thousand dollars is our uh, net worth. Again, a hundred thousand dollars here. And two hundred thousand dollars there. Here we have a five hundred thousand dollars home, and we owe two hundred thousand dollars, so we have three hundred thousand dollars net worth as well. All right, so in both scenarios we have three hundred thousand dollars net worth. Now let's 
erase this real quick. Oh, there it is. So we're now, all right, does that make sense? So, so far, so good. We both, in both scenarios, we have a $300,000 net worth. The issue is we owe more on this, on the uh, the cash out refinance than we did on the other. So, all right, let's say our house appreciates, we'll just say a 2% a year. All right, so in 15 years, in 2036, when the mortgage is paid off, how much will that house be worth? Let's just take a gander. And we're going to say a 2% appreciation. So I'm going to take my trusty calculator and we're going to say $500,000 is our present value. No payment. We're going to say, yep, that's good. 2% appreciation a year, 15 years. It'll be worth $672,000. All right. So in 15 years, in 2036, it's going to be worth $672,000. All right. So, fast forward to 2036. Six, oops, let me get a different color there. 672, ah, 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 clumsy. 600, you don't see that? Yeah, you can see that, good. Let me get my trusty pen here. 672, all right, that's the fair market value. All right, and this one we owe $200,000. Minus two hundred thousand because we still owe two hundred thousand bucks. We paid half of it. We have two hundred thousand left. It's not a pure amortization schedule, but you get the gist. And this one, I probably should keep the same, same numbers here, same color coordinated. We owe two hundred thousand bucks. So our total uh, fair market value on our home, our total net worth on our home, is four hundred seventy-two thousand. And this one, we don't owe anything. Nothing. We have no mortgage. So 672K. That is our total net worth. But this one, this side, we also had $200,000 that was growing for us. All right. And we're just going to say it doubled. We're just going to say over 15 years it doubled, which means we had to get not a very great rate of return, but let's take a, take a gander. So we're going to say 400000 is our future value. 200000 is our Present value, we made no payment, 15 years. Compute N, I, 4.74 is the interest rate we got. At 4.74% interest, that equals $400,000. All right, so in this case, what's better? Well, we take 400,000 plus uh, uh, 472,000, we have 872,000 total net worth because we took that fair market value of the house, subtract what we owe, that gives us 472 uh, plus the 200,000 we cashed out, we have 872,000 and all we had to do to get that was 4.74% a year interest. And, and so here we have 672,000. So I mean, the difference is stark, so $200,000 difference, which is the exact amount of money we, we took out of, out of there. That makes sense. I mean, it was. It's, I mean, it's literally nothing more. So, minus two hundred thousand dollars, or I should say, plus on this side here, uh, relative to that, it's just exact. Literally, the amount we took out and we invested at four point seven four. The house grew at two percent. So it's literally that simple. I mean, you could say, okay, but <laughs> what if that? All right, so I mean, we could. We, what if the house grew at four point seven four? and the investments grew at 2%, it's going to be the exact same thing differently. So the only question that comes to this is two things. The liquidity, because here we still have a $2,000 a month outflow. So even though we owe, we own 200,000 more of, of liquid assets, we still have 2,000 a month that has got to be paid. All right, so that's, that's, that's real money that you're going to have to come up with for the next 15 years. So if you think about it, for the next 15 years, $2,000 a month, oops, it's gonna be times 180, it's gonna cost us 360,000 in payments, mortgage payments, all right? So I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do this, but let's just say we say, okay, we're gonna have $200,000 as our, uh, as our uh, we need uh, 200,000 bucks, our present value, of 2,000 a month, and I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do this right. Zero future value. How many years, so bear with me just a second. Uh, we're gonna say 4.74 is our interest, compute, and 36, 
Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, 2,000 a month, 200,000 divided by 2,000 a month. Yeah, it's 100 months. Um, yeah, I, I, off the top, I can't think about it. So I'm just thinking, if you had $200,000, you got 4.74% a year interest. Bear with me just said $200,000, present value, 4.74% is our interest rate. And we made a payment of 2000 a month. And we had no, all right, how many compute in, right? Yeah, 2000 a month. One second. 36. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. I, guess I always get those, and off the top of my head, I can't remember how to do that. All right, either way, so we have $200,000 to play with here. We still have uh, 2000 a month that we got to pay. All right, so 2000 a month for the next 15 years, that's 360000 we're going to have to pay. So how much would this, I guess you could just say this would be worth $400,000 uh, in 15 years at 4.74, while this is cost us 360000 bucks. I don't know. I mean, it's, it gets confusing, doesn't it? At the end of the day, though, I think a lot of people forget about the cash I refi. Yes, it's worth two hundred thousand more here, but they still have two hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars that they have to pay in a mortgage balance. Yeah, and that's you know that's that's going to cost you three hundred sixty thousand dollars. Now you could sell the house, downsize for sure, absolutely, you could do that, but you're only going to get four hundred seventy two out. Where if you sold the house to downsize, you're going to get six hundred seventy two thousand out. So it really comes to, A, how long are you going to be in your house? What do you expect your house is going to appreciate at relative to the return of the market? The concern I have is that if you go this route, um, you're 65 years old and you still owe $200,000. Um, that's just, you know, what if things change where you can't sell your house? What, I just, what if things change where the market underperform? I just, so many things, what ifs. But you still have the two hundred, the two thousand, two hundred thousand dollar debt, or two thousand a month. It's just, I look. I'm just not tip generally a big fan. You know, if I'm younger, sure. If I think I can get better than four point four percent or whatever I got, four point seven four, sure. If I know I'm not going to be in that house when I'm sixty five, sure. All these things make sense to me, but. Yeah, if I'm at my, my stage at 50 years old and 15 years from now, I mean, I, I don't know, man. Especially if I'm going to sell my house and probably uh, within 10 years anyway, I'm not sure I want to do a re cash out refi because it's still going to cost, what, 15000 closing costs. So for me, I don't think I'm going to do it. But I hope, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I hope this makes sense. You know, Tell me about what your thoughts are on this and uh, we'll have a discussion. All right, thanks.